Hello again. Welcome back. Well, we've been talking about uh, cryptographic protocols, what they are. Let's talk about a specific one today. Okay, so many existing protocols are based on one that was invented in 1978 by Needham and Schroeder. It's called the Needham Schroeder Protocol. It's very widely used still, including in the Kerberos uh, authentication suite. Now, Needham and Schroeder is what's called a uh, shared key authentication protocol. Note this is prior to the public key stuff, and so there are no public key encryption anywhere in sight. We're using symmetric encryption everywhere. The idea of this protocol is that two parties, A and B, want to talk to one another, and, but they don't share a key, and so they have to uh, propagate a key so that they can engage in secure symmetric communication. Okay, so there are three parties involved in this protocol. There's A and B, the two parties that want to communicate, or actually more correctly, A wants to communicate to B. B doesn't know this necessarily. But then there's a third party, S, uh, and S is the trusted key server. And the role of S is to generate a new session key so that A and B can communicate and disseminate the key to the two parties. We'll see how that happens. Um, so it's assumed that A and B already have keys which allow them to communicate securely with S, but they don't share a key between, between themselves. Okay, An idea that we, another idea that we need to introduce here is the notion of a nonce. Not stands for number used once, and here's the idea. It's just a randomly generated number that one of the parties, say A or B, generates, and the idea is this. If A generates a random number, and it's a sufficiently large number, say 32 bits, and includes it in a message to the other party, B, if B then responds with a message that includes that number, A can be pretty sure that that message is not a replay of a previous message from some earlier run of the protocol. Why? Well, the odds of you know, hitting on that particular number or finding an earlier message that contains exactly that number are going to be pretty small because you know, 2 to the 32 is a pretty big space. So this is called a nonce. Uh, and notice that a nonce is not a timestamp. A nonce doesn't, doesn't show that the message is current, that is, is recent, but it shows that it's fresh where fresh means that it's actually in response to the earlier message I sent. And so it doesn't have anything to do with the, with the time duration, but it does say that the two messages are related to one another. OK, so let's look at the protocol. Um, in any protocol that we look at, we're going to be asking of each step in the protocol a couple of different questions. First of all, what did the sender try to convey by sending that message? And secondly, assuming that the message arrived, what is the receiver entitled to infer from the receipt of that message? So let's look at Needham Schroeder. Notice it's got five steps. Uh, the three principles are A, S, and B. And remember that S is the key server. So A sends to S a message containing three components, A, B, and a new nonce that A has just generated, N sub A. So what is the semantics of this? Well, to understand any of these messages, we have to understand the larger context of the protocol. And so, uh, for example, when B receives a message in, in step three, it's got to know that it's participating in the Needham Schroeder protocol and the meaning of that message in that context. So in this context, message A, <coughs> excuse me, message one, uh, says it's, it's A saying to S, hey S, wake up. I'm A, I want to communicate to B. Here's a new nonce. Generate some keys for us. OK? So then message two, uh, assuming that S received the first message, uh, S responds appropriately and does the following. It generates a new key, and that's K sub AB. OK? So this should be a key. key uh, the S is assumed to be a key server, which can generate a key adequate for these purposes. And then it packages up that key and sends it back to A. But there's some other information in that message. Okay, So notice what's in the message. Well, first of all, that the message is encrypted with KAS, which means that nobody but A and S can decrypt this thing, because they're the only ones with this key. Okay, So S includes the nonce, and that tells uh, A that the message is fresh. It includes B's identity. It includes the key. And it also includes this additional piece of information which is encrypted with KBS. 
Now notice that A can't look inside that. It doesn't have KBS, but it knows what to do with it. It's going to send that on to B. Okay? So after step two, A has the key. It has KAB, but B doesn't yet. And so in step three, A sends to B that additional piece of information which was shoved into that message too, uh, and it contains the key and A's identity encrypted with KBS. Okay? So when B receives this, it's supposed to wake up and say, oh, this is step three of Needham Schroeder protocol. Uh, A wants to communicate with me. Here's a key that I can do that with. Uh, and it knows that that piece originated with S because it's encrypted with KBS, which only B and S have. Okay, so at the end of step three, A has the key and B has the key, but A doesn't know that B has the key. Why not? Because message three might have been lost. And so then they, there's these two additional steps and the idea of the two additional steps is for each of them to learn that the other has the key and can use it. So B generates a new nonce, N sub B, encrypts it with the new session key, KAB, and sends the result to A. Okay? So that's, that's B saying, hey, A, I've got the key and I can use it. Uh, tell me whether you're in the same circumstance. Okay? So after step four, then A knows that B has the key and can use it. And then A sends back to B a response. This is like a handshake. Um, and it's this funny thing, N sub B minus one encrypted with KAB. Well, why minus one? Well, if A just sent back N sub B encrypted with that key, then B wouldn't learn much, right? Because that's the same thing that he sent in step four and A could just send that back without being able to use the key. But because um, A is able to decrypt that, apply some function to the contents, and reapply the key, then B knows that A actually has the key and can use it. Notice the minus one there is not really important. It could have been you know, minus 17 or the square root or any function, just enough to show that uh, that A can actually decrypt the previous message, uh, apply some function to it, and re-encrypt it. That's the important thing. Okay, so what have we said? Well, Needham Schroeder has been historically a very important protocol. It's very widely studied. Uh, and it illustrates several things in general about protocols, in particular the structure of protocols, you know, the, the exchange of messages, how protocols work. It shows the, an example of a protocol where there are a number of parties with different roles. S, remember, had a specific role. It's the trusted key server. And A and B, in this case, are two parties that want to communicate with one another. And it also shows how nonces can be useful to show the freshness of a message. Thanks.